Dang dang monster. I'd like to hear your alibi. Ooh, class 78 student registry. It's about the one writing all the rules. They're actually. <laughs>I told you, there's a corpse hanging out here. No way! Are they really dead? Is this really a dead body? Someone check the pulse and everything, please, because y'all don't do that. You need to begin looking around right way. However, be ever so careful. There's no telling what you might find. I'm thinking about some stuff. I think it's gonna be interesting when we get that moment. Wait, another thing that just annoys me. We never got that announcement. They never announced that there was a dead body. We need to find out who this actually is. There's no way to tell with the mask covering the face like this. And the white coat they're wearing makes it impossible to tell about the body itself. The victim is a total mystery. The only thing I do know... Is that, is that whoever it is, they attacked me last night in my room. How did they wind up dead here? Take off the mask! Their heart isn't beating. They're not breathing. All signs of life have come to a complete stop. Okay, thank you for that. Thanks to the knife that's been driven into their stomach, their clothes are stained when bright, strained a bright red. It appears the bleeding has, has stopped, but the blood that's there is still wet. Be careful, you don't want to touch it and get some on you. I'm pretty sure it's a girl at least. What? How can you tell? Well, well, I think I see the outline of her chest and the general shape of the body. Yeah, the more I look at, look, the more I'm sure it's a girl. Really, then could it be? Don't, don't be who I think it is. Yes. Let's tear the mask clean off. Come on. Wait, don't. But by the time he called out, it was already too late. Toko's hands shot out toward the mask. And in the next instant... Ain't no way! There was a binding, blinding light and a deafening roar. The body blew up. It blew up. Blew up, blew up, blew up, blew up, blew up, blew up, blew up. My vision started to darken. I prepared to pass out. But then, hurry up, put out the fire. As my conscience attempted to float away, I have a voice reached up, voice reached up and pulled it back down to earth. So I'm pressing, press something into my hands. It was a bucket of water. Come on, dump the water on it. Okay. The upper half of the body was on fire. I took aim and tossed the water as hard as I could. Thankfully, that was enough to put out the fire. It died down, leaving behind only the unpleasant smell of the burning. Well, that sucks. I guess that took care of it. What the heck, man? It exploded. What, what did you say? I had a bad feeling about the body, but I never imagined that it would explode. And now the body... What? It's burnt to a crisp. That's beyond well done, man. Don't compare it to steak. <laughs> I'll never be able to eat steak again. Hmm. Who isn't here right now? Huh? If we consider who's not here, that will quickly narrow down who it must be. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Can we check to see if this is actually a human body, though? Like, I know you touched it. Well, if he touched it, that means he felt skin, so... Um... The only one person missing. Well, how do you explain the bomb? Um... It's Kyoko? Kyoko? Nah, I don't believe it, man. Then that dead body. Is Kyoko? No, that can't be right. <laughs> Calm down. I didn't say it was Kyoko. But, but I mean, who else? <laughs> there is one other person. In other words, the mastermind. The mastermind's dead? What? What? The mastermind? What the heck? Come on, there's no way. The mastermind got charbroiled? Get serious. I agree, normally the idea wouldn't be worth considering, but I have reason to believe it may be true. <laughs> Mastermind being dead will explain the other matter, wouldn't it? Monokuma can hardly move around if it's... Mastermind is dead, right? Mm, Master is dead, yeah. But that corpse is a girl, right? That doesn't make sense. I mean, remember what Alter Ego said? So that same person may very well be the Mastermind who planned this out. According to the father, oh, it's a man in his late 30s. Oh, never mind. 
It seems possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in the school right now. What the heck? He said the mastermind is someone middle-aged dude, right? Which the corpse obviously isn't. I mean, could that mean the mastermind isn't the headmaster? Is it the teenage girl Kyoko told me about? The ultimate despair? Huh? Oh, let that slip out, huh, Mokoto, huh? <laughs> so much for keeping secrets. Oh, he's just going to tell everyone? Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student at Hope's Peak. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> I like he's just telling everyone just now. The other day, Kyoko confided in me. She said there is a 16th student here in the school. What? I think you better tell us everything you know. Well, all Kiko told me was... Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, let's play through this. The 16th student lying hidden somewhere in the school. Mm -hmm. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for him. It sounds like Kiko thinks Mukuro Ikusaba is the mastermind. There's another student here, and it's a female. That would match the body's characteristics. And that phrase, the ultimate despair, it sounds super mastermindy, doesn't it? It does sound kind of cool, I ain't gonna lie. Okay, so the mastermind is a girl, Mukuro, and, the sh and she's a student here, and she's the ultimate despair. Though so she's been hiding here in the school like some teenage Bigfoot. How'd she wind up burnt to us crisp? What the heck? None of this makes any sense. To just suddenly show up and then die. Hmm. I think we better take a closer look at the body. There may be some clues to help us find out exactly who it is. Uh. Hey, wait, what? What? Um. Are we forgetting something? You know, Toko. Oh yeah, she kind of was there. Is she good? What? Oh yeah, she got totally, totally blown up, huh? Hmm. Forget about her. I'm sure the explosion vaporized her. <laughs> Yo. Oh my gosh. She survived. Somehow. <laughs> Yo. He's so he does not like Toko. How did how did she survive an explosion at close range, man? Okay, first off, we have this knife, the same knife. Never mind. Watch the Makoto. She may be dead, but she's still a girl. You know, you know what? Be quiet. I'll investigate if I need to investigate. Okay, there's a few things to check here, though. First thing is the hand. Yeah, what's there? There's like a tattoo on the hand. Hold on, there's something on the ground there. There's something next to the body. It's a key. Is that what Kyoko took from Monokuma? No, because you have the other key. The other key was... But what did you steal? So... I stole this. Yeah, the key looked like that. <laughs> Come on, Makoto, those, those look completely different, man. That's right, the key she stole was shaped like Monokuma. Then this key is... Probably for the headmaster around? Or was it the key that she had? What is it? Did you find something? Yeah, this is on the ground near the body. <laughs> I've never seen this before. What could it possibly... Where, what could it possibly go to? So even you don't know, then. Okoto, I'm going to give you a very important task. Huh? I see. That key might give you access to certain areas we thought were locked. The data center. Hey, it fits. Is this the key? Then this is the key to the data center. I managed to unlock the data center. I guess that, guess all that running around paid off. I have to tell everyone else. I go in by myself. I reached out and put my hand on the door. I closed my eyes and tried to clear my mind. With a silent prayer, I slowly opened the door. Nothing happened. After making sure I was still alive, I slowly opened my eyes. Oh! So this is that room! I thought this would have been, would have been in the headmaster room. So what is in the headmaster's room then? And in a in a word, the room was strange. I saw whole data center. Hold up, before before they move me around, and we got the cameras on the walls. Then what's on the right side? What is that? I mean, all the rooms up to now were strange, but this room had a special kind of strangeness. It wasn't a surface fear like the rest rooms. Here, the fear was lurking beneath the surface. The room was filled with that kind of dread. What? what? Hey, 
That. Hero extended the trembling hands and pointed. Look at those monitors on the wall. Look at what they're showing. And what's up with that one map? Each monitor displays a different section of the school. Dorms, the classrooms. Yeah, 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 man. It's showing. It's it's showing all the things. Yeah. This is what? It's a direct feed from every single surveillance camera. All the cameras in the school feed back into this room, and they're displayed here on these monitors. So the sole purpose of this room is to watch us. <gasps> to watch us? Huh? Then this room is it's all clear. the mastermind's private room, without a doubt. The mastermind's room. I guess that makes sense. So the mastermind was here, watching us. <laughs> then I think this settles it. Huh? Hmm. The body in the garden. If they found had the key to this room, it could only mean one thing: <laughs> that it was the body of Mukuro Ikusaba, and she is the and she was the mastermind. Hold up, man! I don't know if jumping into conclusions like that. I mean, you would like to think that. I mean, given everything that happens, it would make sense, but. Explain the exploding body. That doesn't make sense to me still. <gasps> then the mastermind mind is dead? Like, really, really dead? <laughs> it would seem so. <laughs> For real? A <Are> serious? <laughs> it's too bad they had to go out, go and die before... <laughs> Master could kill him himself. The mastermind is dead? Could that really be true? Does it mean it's all over? No, man, bitch, we still haven't gone to the headmaster's room. Whatever happened, they obviously didn't die a natural death. And who stabbed them? How did they get stabbed? Did they stab themselves? What's going on? And who, and who, so who was that? But, but if the mastermind really is dead, Woo! that means we can finally get out of this hellhole. How about that? We gotta hurry up and find the exit, come on. That's enough. No, we have to check this area thoroughly first, for real. But what about the edge exit? Hmm. If the mastermind truly is dead, we can leave whenever we decide to. But right now, <laughs> we need to find out why the mastermind set this up, this life or death game, in the first place. Hmm. And I'm bothered by the fact that this mastermind was obviously murdered. Murdered? So you think so too? Naturally. Okay. First thing I'm curious about is this. Hey, look, next to that TV. Is that a TV antenna? How about that? It's just like the one my grandma uses. It's totally one of those high def antennas. What is that? Wait, so if we hook up that antenna, we could watch TV? Did someone say TV? You know? Well, Saturday morning, Hina's here. Hmm. <laughs> uh, are you talking about me? Okay. Anyway, if we can watch TV, let's do it. Come on, come on. You know? Ah, you're a star for info from the outside world, huh? Hmm. Alright, let me work my magic and you'll be quantum leaping your way to TV land before you know it. I mean, I get the reference, but what's he talking about? Oh yeah, what's this one of the Earth? Oh no, I guess it's just the monitors. It's a ridiculous number of monitors here. And the mastermind's been using all of them in spy on us. As long as I have this. Huh? Look at Master Go. It's like the feast for my for the eyes. What? How much is a monthly membership? Bro, what are you talking about, man? She is the biggest Togami simp. Okay, I definitely wanted to check out this thing right here. What is this? This door kind of is kind of creepy. I got the picture of Monokuma on it. What could be inside? It's locked. We need a key. It's probably that key that Toko had, or not Toko, that Kyoko has. No luck. The door's locked, huh? What if you use the key that opened this door? Let's give it a try, just in case. Nope, no good. It won't even fit in the keyhole. Hmm. Yeah. Well, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. The mastermind's dead, right? So nothing's going to happen to us. Yeah, I guess you're right. Are you sure about that? Mm -hmm. huh? Oh, ho, ho, ho. What's wrong? Hmm. Good news for all of you. Saturday morning, Kitty's out there. I think I got the TV working. Really? Hmm. Now all we gotta do is switch it on. What? 
Then do it. Uh, Freaking idiot mastermind. All you guys need to cut free from your regrets from the outside world. The heck? And they were sitting there watching TV the whole time. They really thought they could get away with it. Yo, that's actually kind of creepy. This is... It's the feed coming from the surveillance camera monitoring this room, isn't what it? What the heck? That's weird. Come on. Hey, what are you doing? Huh? That's really weird. Um... <laughs> you're weird. Weird in every way possible. And not just weird. Super weird. But... But this TV isn't hooked up to anything but an antenna. So how's it showing the camera feed? Well... Did you try changing the channel? Uh, um... Oh, good idea. Let's give that a try. He went through each channel one by one. Okay, let's see them. But every channel, it was just us. It was a live feed of us standing there in the data center. Is this being broadcasted to everyone worldwide? I was thinking, I, was, I was mentioned something like that a couple um, streams ago too. Like, man, what the heck? Is it broken or something? Could it be? No, there must be some kind of trick to it. Some weird setup. A trick? What kind of trick? Actually... Yikes. I'm not sure, but... What? Been a while. <laughs> Yo, Monokuma? How? You're supposed to be dead. Me? Dead? Don't be freaking st stupid. What? Hey, you're acting kind of strange. Something seems different. Of course. Of course I'm different. Evolution is perfectly natural. After all, I've been hibernating for two years already. Uh -huh. Not even. It's been like half a day at most. How are you alive again? <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. Hoo hoo hoo. The look on your faces right now is sublime. That's what I wanted to see. The moment you went from hope to despair. You guys already struck gold when you found that TV. Yes, indeed. That TV in it is an essential part of your school life here. What? I knew it was hiding a secret of some kind. What the heck? But I connected the antenna. Why is it just showing us the surveillance feed? <laughs> Look how attentive they are now. Well then, I'm going to let you in on a blood-gushing secret and tell you about it. Ah! That TV is absolutely without a doubt displaying the signal coming in on the antenna. Huh? Huh? But what does that mean? It's displaying the signal, but it's just us standing here. Unbelievable. You're so stupid, you don't get it? Fine, I'll tell you. Kills, kills, kills. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> oh man, this is insane. This killing game is being broadcast live to the entire world. It's the most popular thing on TV. It's like a game show all of a sudden. What? This killing game is being broadcast live to the entire world. It's the most popular thing on TV. It doesn't matter how many times he says it. I don't know what it's supposed to mean. I mean, even if I understood the words, I'm not so sure I'd understand the deeper meaning. What? Broadcast live to the entire world? What kind of joke is this? That's... It can't be. Have they taken over the airwaves somehow? Oh, the camera feed is no. being broadcast? <laughs> no way. That's impossible. That kind of overconfidence is a major weakness in your crisis management system. You know that? Even Togami was freaked out by that. All you need is one weird trick that I found, and hij hijacking the airwaves is easy mode. Are you being serious right now? How much power do does this person person have? Everything has a meaning, you know. All those hints I gave you, all those tantalizing tid tidbits about the school's mysteries, even me luring you here right now. Why would I do any of that without reason? It was all for my captive audience to show them true despair like they've never seen them before. <laughs> that was wild. I became the director of a despair-based production. This is the ultimate reality show. The best in despair entertainment. What are you saying? You're lying. If this was on TV, the police and everyone else would be going crazy. Uh, um... Yeah, there's no way they wouldn't have tried to come and rescue us. Actually... What if they already did? Ain't no way. Yes, indeed. But then again, it's not really any of their business, right? Sure, some people might yell at their TV to try and warn you, but who would actually come here to say to help? 
Don't you think that's that's possible? I don't really know personally though, so whatever. This can't be. But to take control of all communications like that, you need an astronomical amount of resources. <laughs> yep. So how could things have gone come this far? Well, yeah! that's a secret. There's something y'all need to do first. Remember, graduate. What? Of course. Yeah, duh. There's a the little business of. Oh. <laughs> Solve the murder. A body has been discovered. <laughs> so delayed. After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class mm -hmm. trial will begin. Huh? A class trial? Do you mean? <laughs> yeah. It's the Monica oh, I'll leave the next Monokuma file right here. Everyone give it all you got, okay? Heart pounding excitement. Okay, things are gonna get pretty crazy from here on out. You're in for a heck of a ride. I can't wait! I can't wait! Ain't no way, man. And then he was gone. Reality is incomprehensible. The truth hopelessly out of reach. All we were left with was despair. We stood there for I don't know how long, frozen in place. I couldn't think. I took everything I had just ki I just had to keep myself standing upright. <sighs> I don't understand any of this. What's the spare entertainment and how is he still alive? I'm sick of this. I thought that we finally, finally we could get out of here. Yeah. And plus, what did you say about a class trial? Stop talking. Well, that part's obvious. The class trial is the class trial. But what it means is that, at this point, we have to figure out who the culprit is. Figure out who killed Kyoko? What? What the heck? Yeah, what are you talking about? I thought Mukuro Uk Ik Ikusaba was the one who died. <laughs> Victim was female, right? Kyoko certainly fulfills that condition. And if Monokuma is still alive and active, that means that the mastermind Mukuro Ikusaba isn't dead. Unless there's something else more going on, man. So naturally, that body can't belong to her. So it must be Kyoko. But if you're deciding that Mukuro Ikusaba is the mastermind. Who's no one said that no one but you is saying that they're completely connected right now, so that's unconfirmed. I'm gonna keep going with that mindset. That's unconfirmed. There's no other possibility. The body is Kyoko's? Oh, new music? Well, I better stop by checking out the Monokuma file. Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife. <laughs> okay, this is a remix of the song, actually. Which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object as thick as a metal pipe. Yeah, but I didn't notice they had blood on the back of their head, too. Ba, ba, ba. The body was covered with other wounds. But these were the last several days old. So they had wounds. So they had wounds, but there were several. Okay. The Monokuma file doesn't tell us who the victim actually was. They never tell. Well, they do actually. The identified body. Could it really be Kyoko? Or. I have no choice. I have to investigate. I have to uncover the truth for myself. No matter what, I have to find out what happened, or we're all dead. I need to go back to the scene of the crime, back to the garden. Okay, we have this knife. Yep, lay on the ground. Is this? It must be the knife that was stuck in the body before it exploded. The first explosion must have thrown it over here. Mukuma file said that said the knife went all the way through the body from back front to back. Does it mean the knife is what actually caused the fatal injury? I think. Either way, this knife. It looks really familiar. Wait, is this? Yeah, it's the same knife that they tried to get you with, man. Whoever this person is in the mask that was that was that attacked me last night, they were holding that knife. And the same knife was used to stab the same masked attacker we found here. So maybe this masked person got stabbed because when they attacked, I was in a kind of trance. Maybe I reacted by grabbing the knife. Maybe then I okay. Okay, I was trying to see what Makoto was going with this thought process here. You think you did someone in Makoto?
<laughs> this is Makoto, really? The lower half of the body didn't get wet at all. After the body blew up, the half got set on fire, so I dumped the bucket of water on it, which explains the bottom half isn't wet. Okay. There's nothing strange about that, right? Weird if you ask me, I don't know, that seems a little... <laughs> the upper half of the body got set on fire with the explosion, so it's totally blackened. Also, the top half of the body is wet. Yeah, from when you doused water on it. That's because it got set on fire and I threw water on it. So it's only threw water on that part that was on fire, the top half. The bottom half is still dry. They keep emphasizing the fact that the bottom half is dry. In other words, there's nothing strange about the top half being wet. There isn't, right? What? Why do you keep bringing that up, Makoto? You're making me feel like I'm missing something. My thing is, if you doused water on it, I'd think that the whole body would be wet. Well, I guess if you put it on that one area, but I don't know. There's, there's something strange about the body's fingernails. Yeah, some are painted or are they removed? Oh, these are fake nails and they're really long. They seem like they'd get in the way of no, of normal activity. Okay, fake nails. Fake nails have been added to, okay. And they have like that tattoo. There's also something on the back of her right hand. Is this a tattoo? It got burned, so I can't make out the whole thing, but it looks like a picture of a dog or something. I've never seen anything like it before. Tattoo right hand, okay. Remember there were some chickens in a chicken coop. There's four now. Yo. Okay, here. I'm glad you popped up, man. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Listen, do you remember how many chickens were he there were in here? Hmm. Of course, there were precisely five. He was really proud of that. Yeah, right. Huh? Huh? What's wrong? There's only four chickens here now. We're one short. That's so weird. I wonder when it disappeared. What? I was down here just before nighttime last night, and there are definitely five chickens then. What? what are we going to do? Going from five to four is going to have an impact on the structure of the world. Conspiracy. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. If even a single piece disappears, the entire world will remain unfinished. I'd my best to ignore here and focus on the problem at hand. Why did one of the chickens disappear? Could it be related to the case? Oh, I couldn't click this. Wait, what's that? Looks like fragments of something. Maybe from the explosion? They're all burnt, so I can't really be sure, but feels like something I've seen I've seen something like this before. But where? Wait, was it there? I have to double check that later. Check what later? I don't know where that's from. Okay. <laughs> Makoto knows more than me. Good time, Makoto. I wanted to talk to you. Okay, what's up, man? Say what you gotta say. What do you want to talk about? So, in other words, I'd like to hear your alibi. Alibi. In other words, correct. I'd love to hear where you were after the nighttime began last night. Where were you? <laughs> Who's questioning me first? I want to know where you were. <laughs> you probably got Toko as an alibi. <laughs> well, I was sick, so I was asleep all night. But why are you asking about that now? And what's the nighttime got to do with it? Naturally. Isn't it obvious? There's more that took place after nighttime. How can you be so sure? Hmm. Because just after nighttime began, I came to the garden. I was going, or going around looking for everyone so I could tell them about Monokuma. Hiro's been spending most of his time in the garden the last few days, so I figured he'd be here. And I can confirm that when I arrived last night, there was no body here. Okay, so... Oh yeah, because oh yeah, there's the broken Monokuma. I almost forgot about that. So, Hiro was in here before nighttime, or at, after nighttime. Togami discovered the Monokuma thing. He went and tried gathering everyone. He found Hiro in here. In other words. So the murder could only have taken place. So the murder could only have taken place at some point during nighttime, after I left the garden. However, Toko, Hiro, and Hina and I were in the gym together the entire night last night. What? Hmm. Once I found Hiro in the garden, we immediately went to Toko and Hina's rooms to get them together. At that point, we all went to the gym and began dismantling Monokuma. As a precaution, we made sure not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. Okay. 
In other words, all four of us have alibis. So, Hina, Toko, Hiro, Togami. Okay. The only ones who don't have an alibi are me and Kyoko. That's right. And if the victim really is Kyoko, then I'm the only one without an alibi? Hmm. Also, when we were, went to get Hina and Toko, we stopped by your room as well. What? But you never came to the door, so where precisely were you? Lying in bed asleep. Were you, were you not listening? I'm telling you the truth. I was in my room, but I was dead asleep. I had a fever, so... That's hardly an alibi. What do you want me to say? <laughs> want me to lie? And... I know. <laughs> so, what now? You seem to be in quite a disadvantage here. It's 11 o'clock right now. Okay. Okay, and... Well, I was thinking about when we first found the body. When the body was found? I should look back on what I did this morning. To help me remember when it was. When the cool announcement woke me up at 7 o'clock as usual. So now it's 11, so 4 hours passed since he woke up here. And I headed to the dining hall pretty soon. Once I got there, I met with Hina. That was right around 7.30. Then I headed to the gym where everyone else was waiting. Next, Toko went to get the pickaxe, and that's when she found the body. What time was it then? Hmm. 9 o'clock. That's right, it had to be right around 9 o'clock. So I think I, we can say for sure that the body was found at 9 a.m. Okay, my job's done. Well, precisely, Toko discovered the body at 9 a.m. And now it's 11. Oh, man, a lot. Dang, time to cook by fast, dude. <laughs> Just be sure, I should take a look at the tool shed. Yep, let's check this out. But they say something metal hit the back of the head of the body, so... This room is dusty and disorganized. In other words, a pre-stereotypical tool shed. Ooh. What is this? A tarp? Wait, was there a tarp in here before? Nope. I should probably look into that. It could be related to the case. The top is wet and covered with mud and grime. Ugh. But the underside is totally clean and completely dry. One side of the tarp is wet and dirty. Something about that bothers me. Something about it. The top is wet and dirty. It has to do with also the body. Maybe. Ooh! They said this one side is wet and one side is not. I. And it does have to do with the body and maybe the top and bottom wet thing. But then I think there's also the fact. I, I think it also goes back to the sprinklers. Like someone covered the body from the sprinkler or something? I don't know. I don't know. The, I, the sprinkler thing still bothers me. <laughs> this panel that controls the sprinklers, they're set to turn on at 7.30 every morning. The new said that the time positively couldn't be changed. Huh? Hold on. Okay. So the sprinklers turn on at 7.30 each morning, right? And if the body was here before then, the sprinkler should have gotten it wet. That's where the tarp comes in. Okay. Which means that murder... Murder must have taken or the taking place elsewhere, and then the body was brought here. Something. Else. I think I've checked everything I need to in this area. I'm not done yet. There are other areas I need to check. Specifically, that fragment I found before. There's somewhere I need to go in order to confirm my suspicion, and I still need to find out more about Kyoko. Kyoko was never the kind of person to talk about herself that much, but she gave you that letter, man. Don't forget about that letter. Maybe if I could find, can get to, into a room, I'll be able to find out more. But the key to a room. It's all oh, clear now. The Gami has it. I'll simply limit your options. I cannot allow you to engage in any further suspicious what? activities. Yeah, what? Just give up. Give me the key to your room. I'm. I don't have any. I don't have a choice. I have to see if he'll let me borrow her room key. This is not going to go well. Hey, Togami. If you come up with an alibi, I'd be happy to hear it. Later, at the class trial. Oh no, it's not about that. You have the key to Kyoko's room, right? I was hoping I could borrow it. I'm afraid I can't take that risk. You're the prime suspect after all. Then come with me. Of course, if I were to go with you, that would be a different story. Thank you for thinking. Then will you go with me? Hm. Sorry, I have my own agenda to take care of. Find me again later and we'll see. Yo, know, screw you. What's, what's going on in the gym? Why didn't let me go? What, why is there an ex exclamation point there? What's going on here? Oh, a part of Monokuma? Monokuma's laying this mantle down the floor, but I figured it wouldn't be here. The bomb. Oh. Okay, that bomb that and that bomb went missing. There's no doubt about that. The fragment I found in the garden. Okay, that's.
That's interesting. Okay, I've checked everything else I can think of. All that's left now is Kyoko's room. I should head back to the garden and ask Togami. You think you could go soon, Togami? You wanted to check out Kyoko's room, right? Very well, let's go. Ah, wait for me. I can't lock it myself. I Open the door, man. Hm. Well then, here we go. So Gami took out the key and slid it into the keyhole, and then... And it's open. Looks like it. Thanks. Okay, this is Kyoko's room. Oh, interesting room, by the way. Yeah, we never been in Kyoko's room. What the heck is this? There's something on the table. It's a wood block decoration. What? It's probably a key. The locker at the, those really traditional places Public bathhouses use them for their lockers. Hmm. I want to know. I've never gone to a public bathhouse. Doesn't really surprise me. It's hard to picture Togami doing something like that. It's certainly possible. But if it is a key, I think I might know what it unlocks. Really? What? Hmm. Unless I'm mistaken. I'm pretty sure I saw something at, in the dojo that this might go to. Okay. What do you have to say about this, Togami? What? You wanted to come here, right? So what is it you're looking for? Nothing in particular. I just thought we might find some clue in here. A clue that might help us understand Kyoko. Come on. You can't be serious. That's why you made me take the, take time out of my search to come here? Sorry. Regardless, if you plan on poking around at random, you're doomed no matter how much time you take. Surely you have something more concrete. Something to give us some short some sort of distraction here. More concrete? Ah, I know. Earlier Koko gave me something. What's this? Yep, yeah, there's so much determination to open it yet. Yeah, only open it if something ever happens to me. Come on, man. How did you forget about that? What's in the envelope? Kyoko gave it to me. She said if something ever happened, I should open it. Hm. Well, something has certainly happened, so open it. Come on, Makoto, man. Open the envelope and look inside. Inside was a single piece of paper. Under the sheets. What? That's all there was in there? Yeah, it looks like it. Under the sheets, what could it be? Okay, let's see what's under these bed sheets. But could something really be hidden under the, the bed sheets? What if it's another bomb? Part of me didn't expect to find anything. But as I lifted up the sheets, what's this? I found a crumpled up piece of paper. Ooh! Class 78 student registry. Mukuro Uku Ikusaba. Interesting. I see. Appears to be Mukuro Ikusaba's profile. It looks like it. That's probably the other thing Kyoko stole when she snuck snuck into the headmaster's room, along with the key. God, you're annoying. Fine. I tell you, it was a key and blank. That's it. This must be that blank that Monokuma was talking about. Kyoko said a death without meaningless was unappealing, and this is what she left behind. Hmm. What else does it say? Okay, we got the name. Ultimate Soldier? I thought it was the ultimate despair. Although small for her age, she was a military specialist trained in every weapon type unimaginable. The bombs and stuff, so they know about that. And knives! So, I mean, if, if they were the one who had the knife, but, okay. She showed an interest in the military from childhood, and soon found herself completely absorbed in it. In elementary school, she won a survival game tournament, and began writing for military magazines. Just before entering middle school, while she and her family were on vacation in Europe, she disappeared. The story of a young Japanese girl being kidnapped quickly took over Japanese media outlets. An intense international investigation turned up, no matter turned up, no information, and she was never found. However, she reappeared in Japan three years later, alone and completely unannounced. She revealed that she had joined a mercenary group known as Fen... Fen... Rear... Rear... <laughs> for those three years. She insisted that she had been kidnapped, that she'd received battle training for of her own vo volition. However, she never revealed why she decided to return home when she did. I never imagined I would hear the name Finn Rear in a place like oh he knows about it. Huh? You recognize it? Naturally. The Finn Rear Mercenary Corps is a collection of battle crazed warmongers. 
I was about to say that differently. But they do have their ish, their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. This is all part of a world turtle world totally removed from the one I live in. Hmm. I have to say, I'm intrigued. Every rumor I've heard says that friend Rear has already. Found it. Whoa! I feel like our hero is becoming a bit player, and a bit player is becoming our hero. <laughs> what? Hmm. What have you got in your pretty little hands there? Uh-oh, you found her profile? So what if I did? Hey, Don't freak out on, on me. Now. I'm not going to hold it against you or anything. And in case you're wondering, it, I don't hold it against Kyoka either. Even though she stole it and hid it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? True. But who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami, who broke the rules and busted into the headmaster's room. Maybe I'll drag a corpse out here and slice it up and devour it. Bears are omnivores, you know. What do you mean drag a corpse out here and slice it? You mean her corpse isn't already taken care of? What? Are rule violations so unforgivable? You're quite adamant about those regulations of yours. <sighs> of course I am. A proper school life is built on dedication to organization and order. Which is why even I, as, head, as the schoolmaster, have to follow the regulation myself. Oh, so you're saying that saying you have to follow your own rules as well? Of course. Absolutely. I can't have you complaining about how unfair it is. Now can I? In fact, on the subject of fairness, would you like to know something interesting? Yeah, interesting how? It's about the one writing all the rules. They're actually one of the participants in this killing game. Really? I don't think I ever actually told you how many participants there actually were, did I? You actually didn't. Hmm. Yeah, what? I was thinking. I should probably clarify that. Hey, um... When you first all got here in the main hallway, there were 15 people here, right? I think that first meeting may have led to a little misunderstanding among you all. Misunderstanding? How many other people are there? In other words... That's right, there actually... There weren't actually 15 of you. Yes, in the, oh, the six, I knew that. I knew there was 16. What's he talking about, man? There's 16 things there. I didn't know that. 16 then. Oh, it was a theory we had. Now it's confirmed. Mikuro Ikusaba. And she's the 16th, the 16th student. student. Yep. Lying hidden somewhere in the school. The one they <laughs> Look call Makoto, man. Oh. Huh? Why are you mad? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> Why are you telling us this? Oh, well, because, like I told you, this killing game is desperately popular. You wouldn't believe the ratings. Oh, yeah, well, this is alive. <laughs> we're, we're, they're, they're alive. <laughs> and since we've got so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I wanted to wake up a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know? Yes, indeed. Makes sense? Well, now. <laughs> okay, that's, that, that's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some, re some revenge to get. So I have an extra bonus for you. Yeah, revenge. <laughs> I want to get back at that sneaky Miss Kirigiri. So I'm going to share a little secret with you. Seriously? Hey, yeah, like um... what? You know how she wears those stupid gloves day in and day out all the time? Well, I don't tell anyone I told you, but... <laughs> she wears them to cover a bunch of hideous scars that she doesn't want anyone to see. What? <laughs> Oh, okay. Now that's all you get. <laughs> he laughs and goes away. Well, he said scar, not tattoo. Kyoko wears those gloves to cover a bunch of scars? Wait, so on the back of her hand... Oh, actually, there her hand was... Well, that's why it was probably from the explosion, too, maybe. But, wait, but no. Makuma specifically said they were scars, right? Exactly. I'm about to say, come on, Makoto, don't be that ridiculous. So, and that's why Kyoko wears those gloves to hide the scars, which means those fake nails on the corpse. Hmm. Are you thinking about Kyoko again? Huh? What? Forget about her. What matters now is uncovering Monokuma's trap. Yeah, what do you mean by his trap? Such ignorance. God must have really hated you to make you so dull. Ouch! Hmm. Do you remember what Monokuma just told you, us? 
He said there are 16 students, right? Which means Mukoro was a, was a student here. Obviously, Monokuma was trying to tell us that Mukoro is the one creating the rules of, to the game. But why would he tell us that? And why now? He said he wanted to make things clear so there couldn't, wouldn't be any complaints later. Well, Monokuma said a student. I mean, we can imply that's Mukoro, but until things are confirmed, it's up in the air. <laughs> But the mere fact that he said that proves that Mukoro is connected to this case. That's why Monokuma revealed the existence of a 16th student. He needs to make our investigation fair. Mukoro is related to the case. Well, I know she is related to the case, but I don't know if you're going that, that thinking too far ahead on that, Togami. It's certainly possible. Perhaps she's the one who killed Kyoko. What? Hmm. That explains why we would have to have a class trial, wouldn't it? But if she's a student and she killed someone, that would make her part of the school killing game. Mm, okay, I see you're going with that thought process as well. Bakura is the killer. She killed Kyoko? Hmm. Anyone should be able to come to that conclusion, don't you think? Mm, I don't know, I'm too much of a skeptic. In fact, that's exactly why I thought when the investigation first began. What? But, based on what Monokuma told us, I've changed my mind. It's all clear now. Bakura Ikusaba isn't the culprit. What are you talking about? Didn't you just say that... <laughs> Togami, what are you on, man? Yeah, what makes you say that? Hmm. We thought Mukura, the ultimate despair, was the mastermind's true identity. But what if that's true? But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the mastermind go out of their way to reveal themselves to us? Hmm. For their benefit or something? I don't know, man. I don't know why they think. That's a good point. So in other words, Rokura giving us information that would raise questions about her would be bold, to say the least. But it makes more sense then to assume that Mukuro isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. They want us to suspect Mukuro and come to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. That's what makes sense to me. The way you said it, say it, it definitely does seem possible. But if that's really true, if Mukuro isn't the killer, then who is? Hmm. Well then, I believe our work here is finished. Let's move on. I'm sure there are other places in need of uh, need of investigation. I should find out if that key and the dojo really are connected. Let's go. Well, are you coming? We're hanging out now? There are wooden lockers here. They use wood lock keys, just like those super traditional public bathhouses. It looks like the key we found in Kyoko's room really does go to one of these lockers. Eagerly accepted. Bunch of arrows and what's that blood on the bottom? There are a total of arrows. There are arrows in here. It looks like 10 arrows in total. Hmm. They look like they're made of titanium, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Of course, without a bow, they're nothing but strong little sticks. Strong sticks. Ooh, something that hit the person's head. Yep. Oh, there's something else inside the locker. It's a waddled up ball of duct tape. I wonder what this was used for. Is that a blood stain? I see. If it is, that means it must surely be related to the case. But how could it possibly be involved? Yeah. It has blood on it, so. I think that's all the locker has to offer for now. It's very odd, don't you think? The locker is hiding items that were clearly related to the case. But how did the key to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps... Yeah, what, what are you thinking, Togami? Hmm. Forget it. Come on, we need to continue on to the next location. And the, one, and the only one with the key to the victim's room is you? Oh, <laughs> what does that mean? You're suspecting you think people might suspect you, man? Huh? What next location? What? There's still something we need to look into. We need to do some research on Fenrir. Fenrir? You mean the mercenary group that Mukuro was a part of? But how are we supposed to find out about that? Is that obvious? Yeah, the library, man. I believe there was a file related to Fenrir somewhere over here. Sagami so seemed to know the, know the archive like the back of his hand and went straight up to the shelf on the back. Hmm. Here we go. We quickly returned with a file in hand. I have no idea what it says. What language is this? Yeah, for real. <laughs> Well, whatever, I'll read it for you. But I expect you to repay your debt in a hundred times over. A hundred times? Isn't that kind of extreme? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Yo, this angle. Fenrir is an elite fighting unit based out of the Middle East. 
Unlike military contractors, they're a fierce group of soldiers who engage in direct combat. Okay, direct combat. They claim that a single member is equivalent to that to an entire company of regular soldiers. Okay, so these are like super soldiers. Just like Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok. Okay, that's where I knew the name from. Their mere presence is enough to strike fear into any enemy. Mm. They have been involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago they completely ceased all activity. At present, their, their continued existence cannot be confirmed. There are unconfirmed reports that the key members of the group were all neutralized. Oh! Rumors indicate that they were killed to keep them from revealing the main state secrets they had acquired. Some, however, believe there is a mounting inter internal tension within the group. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And they simply imploded. Imploded. Oh. They took out each other. What? Yeah, what's up? This all just sounds like some kind of alternate reality. <laughs> well, it isn't. This is our reality. The only reality. These people are a part of our world. Their battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An unpredictable, unimaginable world. <laughs> That's what makes it all so exciting. Exciting definitely is the world out of the... Yeah, for real, this dude Togami really likes this whole killing game and everything. Like, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> so, did anything jump out to you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. Now that you mention it, the report says something about the, where the name Fenrir comes from, right? Yeah. The wolf from Ragnarok, but is, is that the wolf with three heads or? <laughs> That's right. It said Freemur, the wolf of Ragnarok. Speaking of which, would you like to know more about something about something interesting related to that? To show that they're a member of the squad of the team, each soldier that joins them has the wolf thing on their hand. We get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. What? They got a tattoo of Fenrir? Could that mean... Mm. So that could mean Mikuru Ikusaba's body? And then who killed them? Time is utterly silent, and yet it constantly assaults us. Organisms, the Earth, natural phenomena. It okay. damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, Poetic. it's time to begin the class trial. So, please meet up in the usual spot. Indeed, <laughs> Monokuma. See you later. Damn, yeah, why is he hyped for this? <laughs> He's excited <laughs> for this trial. The time has come. All we can do now is try to uncover the truth during the class That's trial. That's right. But it would seem that way. Let's go. 